Mwale. Yes. Moses Mwale. Yes. Okay. Reverend. It's Reverend, yes. Yes. Right, so yep. Go so this, uh, I'm the Reverend Jim Ball with the Evangelical Environmental Network, and I'm here with Reverend Moses Wale from Zambia, and um, we just had uh, a number of meetings around Washington D.C., including uh, uh, some meetings yesterday on the House side uh, of Congress, the House of Representatives, and and today we had some meetings and with senior uh, officials uh, with. Uh, uh, Senators Kerry and Senator Luger, um, and those went, I thought, extremely well. How did you feel about the meetings? It was exciting to be there. It was ex exciting to talk to the people that matter in as far as U.S. policy is concerned, who can influence policy on issues that are very important, like climate change. It was a privilege indeed. Yes, and... Um, you know, you've been relating, uh, helping people here in the United States um, understand the impacts of climate change on uh, the, you know, the folks in your country. Can you give some concrete examples uh, of how climate has been impacting people, yourself and others, in Zambia? Yeah, there are many uh, stories that uh, we can tell about the reality of uh, climate change back home in Africa. Uh, to re illustrate and to confirm that it is a reality, and it's not uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an issue that is impacting human life, changing uh, lifestyles and uh, changing affecting the livelihoods of the people. Back home, we have uh, an economy that is uh, greatly dependent on rain-fed agriculture, and majority of the folk, especially in the rural area, have to live of the land, and. Uh, much of the agriculture they involved in is rain fed. They are dependent on the rains that uh, previously used to be very predictable. And it would come from a certain time to uh, and end by the certain time. And normally it would be about October to uh, March or April the following year. And uh, most folks produced f uh, food for themselves and had some something excess to sell to the market and earn a bit of money to uh, buy other things in the process. But it's not so for most households. Uh, I have a personal example uh, as someone who is uh, doing agriculture on part-time basis to try to uh, make a living out of that, uh, to supplement my income and meet other uh, uh, needs in my life. I planted a, a field last year in December of corn, hoping to raise uh, some extra money to pump into my family needs. And uh, the crop that I planted at that time was uh, uh, expected to give me a return of about uh, $2,000 or so if I sold everything being equal. But unfortunately, uh, things were not equal for me. Mm. Uh, when we expected the rains to be at their highest peak, when the corn was uh, about to start uh, uh, growing and uh, giving fruit, the rains went and went for good. They never returned. So that meant that uh, all the crop that I planted was lost. With no insurance, with nothing getting com coming out of that, I lost my, my, my little investment I made in the crop. And mm. uh, I ended up losing nothing, uh, everything, and uh, getting nothing out of it. Uh, lucky me and fortunate uh, that uh, I have a paycheck from uh, the other things that I do. So I was able to survive and uh, still put food on the table of my, of my family. But many other folk would not be as fortunate as I am because that's the only uh, means of livelihood, livelihood they have. And so if they lose a crop that, like I did last year, it means that's the end of it. They have to find other ways to survive and other uh, means to make sure that life goes on as it were. And in an economy that is uh, very small, with uh, no much uh, employment opportunities. Uh, uh, in the formal sector now in Zambia, we're having about 600,000 people that are in formal employment out of a population of about 13 million people. Just that less than a million people are in informal employment. And there are no jobs for most of the people. So people have to find other ways of surviving or coping up with the, the effects of uh, loss in life. And so what is happening is that most of our young people are taking up to drugs, which is a very dangerous uh, thing that is happening for future generations to come. 
and uh, most of our women folk, young and old, are taking up to issues of uh, issues of prostitution. At the end of the day, it's creating uh, new other uh, challenges that uh, are affecting a country like Zambia. HIV AIDS is on the on the, on the increase, uh, with 14 percent of the population living with HIV AIDS, and uh, mostly the 15 to 49 age uh, people being the most hit and dying. And so it's also uh, changing the structure of society, where you are having so many of the uh, children-led households and the elder-led households. And those bring their own challenges and perpetuate the cycle of poverty among the, the many folk. So this is one uh, example uh, of uh, a situation where, like where I was, now for a folk who has no other source of income, they will be found in, in such a situation, and then these other things will follow. And if we don't act now to help these folk to survive, then we, we're going to see a, a situation where desperation will be the order of the day. Yeah. Well, Moses, we're so thankful uh, for your, your efforts there in your own country and your ministry there uh, and your willingness to come over here to the United States to help us understand this issue of the impacts of climate change on, on folks there in Africa, especially there in Zambia, and uh, we'll be praying for your ministry. Thank you very much. It was a privilege to be here and to share our story. Thank you.